Okay, this video is on how to mix watercolor. Um, step two of your shell and your bottle. We are going to be creating this as an undercolor, underneath colored pencil. After we do colored pencil or later on in the assignment, we'll paint the tabletop. Why are we waiting for the tabletop? If you put wet watercolor up against wet watercolor, you'll get running. So our shell and our bottle should be dry before we put the color next to it. And it just takes too much time to hit it with the blow dryer for everybody to do that. So since so our class is only 40 minutes, we don't want to waste the time. So what you're going to do is you're going to work with this with your partner. You and your partner will divide the duties. So one of you will mix a step two of your shell and the other will mix a step two of your bottle. You can share the colors with other people. That doesn't matter. I would just like you to have the experience of, you know, trying to mix a color with a partner. Um, so what we're doing is uh, watercolor does come in tubes, but it's the end of the year. So my art, uh, my AP art students have used up the tube <laughs> watercolor. I never know what medium is going to be most popular in AP art because people get to use whatever medium they want in AP art and a lot of people grab the watercolor. So what we're going to be using is what we normally use anyway um, for art survey, which is just regular paint palettes of watercolor. It's pretty inexpensive. And what we're going to use is a stiff acrylic brush and a watercolor brush. How do I know the difference? The watercolor brush is really, really soft. And in this case, we're going to use a round brush. Watercolor brushes also come in flat style, which is like this. But um, we, for watercolor purposes, and most of the time, um, you, you use a round brush. Um, we're going to use the stiff brush to get the um, to get the watercolor out of the palette. There's three sinks here, so you guys can just kind of crowd the sinks, get the colors wet, and what you're going to do is identify your step two. We'll mix the color for the water, for, we'll mix the color for the bottle first. And when it's time, you're gonna grab two handouts, or one of these handouts. This handout is for the people that have like a yellowy green bottle. This handout is for the people that have like an olive green bottle. So when you look, the step two is a very light color, but it's not the white. When I turn down the lights and you mix your color, you're gonna see that the um, white, the step one, which is the brightest part of your bottle, should just be left straight paper. That's gonna be bright. So you're gonna do like just an overall coat of the step two, which is the next darkest color. Cole, can you hit the lights? Can you turn the lights out? So let's move forward. Let me give those to Zach to put on the table later. Um, moving forward, we need to mix the color with the, the way the lights are set when we paint. Reason being is how will you know what color to look for? Okay. And then you can recheck your bottles. As you can see over on that table over there, I have placed the uh, yellow green bottle and the olive green bottle. So we're gonna mix both colors. Believe it or not, the olive green is red and green mixed together. So you're gonna take some dark green And really, um, after putting about mm, a little less than a quarter inch of water in your clear plastic container, you want to get the color so it's almost an opaque green color. Then switch after cleaning your brush and put the red in there. So you get a red green. Now this looks a lot darker than on your paper, so what we're going to do in a minute when I go over to where we're working is I'll test it on the paper. So remember, if you have an olive green bottle, 
the colors that you should use are dark green and red. If you have a yellow green bottle, you're going to put a lot of yellow in there. It's almost all yellow. Your step two. Think about it, right? There's a lot of light on your bottle. It's almost all step two. I mean, it's almost all yellow. And then wash your brush and then get some of the same dark green. Okay. Here are my two colors, and we're gonna go over to the demonstration area right over here. Okay. So next step is what you're gonna do, is you're gonna set up the way that you're set up when you do your shell and bottle drawing, the only difference is you're not going to lift your table. What's going to happen if you lift your table up when you add watercolor? What do you think might happen with your watercolor? It's going to drip. We don't want that to happen. Okay. So I'm going to open my page to my practice bottle. And I got here early this morning and I already erased my extra searching lines. So the point of um, adding watercolor to our final drawing and our sketchbook drawing is you get to practice on your sketchbook drawing and then you know do it again on your final and you'll be all set. Caroline, on that computer tower, would you mind grabbing the tracing that I did the other day? Because I'll use that for my final. Okay. So here's my bottle. You can leave the you can leave this uh, label just plain white right now if you want. You can leave the label plain white, or if you have extra time at the end of the period, you can mix a new color in watercolor and add a, um, a tone to the label too. That's one way to, to handle the label. But as I said before, label's pretty much up to your like artistic freedom. Okay. I'm gonna take a close look at my bottle and I'm gonna keep in mind that all my white areas I'm gonna leave alone. So how do I do that? I'm not gonna paint them in with the undercolor. I've already tested this undercolor, okay? Looks good. It looks like not the bright white highlight, but it looks like a second step. As I apply the watercolor on my bottle, I'm gonna just carefully look and make sure that I leave any areas that are step one meaning the brightest area of my bottle, white paper. That is so important. Worst scenario, if you cover up your highlights, you're gonna be grinding into your watercolor with white colored pencil, which we do have, but it's not so much fun. You get definitely like a brighter look on your step ones. if you leave it white. Notice I'm having difficulty talking and doing this at the same time. Ta-da! Done. But Ms. West, where are your step twos, threes, fours, and fives as illustrated on the sample handout? They're gonna be in colored pencil. Does that make sense? Okay. Similarly, um, you're going to take your, if you have a yellow bottle, in your sketchbook, erase your pencil. Mix your color, make sure you test it. You might have to go back and forth to the sink a couple times, that's totally okay. Look at your bottle, make sure you miss all of your step ones. Most common mistake that students make is they go over their paper too many times with their brush. Try to make it a goal to go on your paper just once. Like in other words, where you have watercolor, try not to go back into it with watercolor. 
If you go back into it with watercolor, you're probably going to eat through the paper. Keep in mind this is drawing paper, not watercolor paper. Um, there's all different um, thicknesses of watercolor paper. Um, and so, you know, I have students that really work into their watercolor a lot and just have puddles of water, but it takes a certain type of paper. This will not handle a puddle of water. Okay. So just leave your step ones out. Now the shell. I've used this shell and I mixed this color. This was just red, brown, and yellow together. Miss West, does the color have to be perfect? No. Remember, we're creating an illusion here. Also, try to stick something like, if your pages are right behind each other like this, and say you did a shell drawing on one side of one page and a bottle drawing on the other side of the page, you, it's not, this technique is not gonna work. So you'll wanna draw your shell on a different page or your bottle on a different page. Because you can probably see how in my sketchbook, the color, even though it's just one coat, has leaked through. Now, I picked this shell because there's a white, like undercolor or a white step to my highlights and a brown. Shoot, so what do I do now? I'm gonna leave the white areas white and just put under color on, or just put color on the brown part of the shell. I grabbed this one because you're in a situation where, okay, there's pink and there's gray, so you're gonna wanna mix two colors. Just light pink, or light pink and light gray, and only apply the color where you see it. If your shell is black and there's a reflected highlight, say it's like shiny and black, then you wanna leave that straight white. So you wanna skip that area altogether. Okay, here you go. And like I said, I'm being very detailed in my explanation, um, but I really want you to have fun with it. And remember this, watercolor is translucent. And colored pencil is opaque. So honestly, you could probably go over any mistakes with colored pencil and be okay. okay. You know, once you do that, you're gonna take your sketchbook and put it just like this so the pages aren't, you know, dry, stuck to each other. Put it like this. Um, we all taped our pages back in our sketchbook. So just so it's not flat or definitely not closed on the back table and then try it on here. And hopefully by the time you try it on here, you'll really be like relaxed with it and be able to paint them in. And that's it. And then these go on the drawing rack with your name and pencil on the back. And, um, and do your best, let's see how you do. Thanks. <laughs>